I love finding awesome and affordable items, customizing them with my Cricut and making them even better. So today's video I am super excited for because I have got eight new Cricut projects for you. The best part is that all these blanks are $10 and under and the projects are quick and easy and will take you under 30 minutes. This is Whiskey and Wit, my name is Whitney, and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. So whether you are brand new to Cricut or you've been doing it for years, hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. If you're new to Cricut, it is a smart cutting machine that allows you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. With your machine comes Cricut's free design space software, and that's where you can create your project, browse from hundreds of images and fonts, and then send it to your machine to cut. I get a lot of questions about this, so Cricut Design Space itself is free. The software is free to download and use, but if you want additional images and fonts and things like that, you can upgrade it for Cricut Access for a monthly fee. I will link more information about that down below if you want to check it out if you want more cut files and access to more things. And let's get right into it with our first blank from Target. Now in Target near their sporting goods section, they usually always have an end cap of these Zach brand cups and I absolutely love them. They have a ton of different kinds, different colors, but I decided to go with this 40 ounce light purple and add a decal to it. Now on the left hand side, I'm gonna go into phrases, but you could either do phrases or images for this. I'm clicking crafting and I'm gonna search for a file that I like. I really love this one that says I'd rather be crafting. So I'm gonna select it and add it to my canvas. Then up here at the top, I'm going to size it to three inches wide because that's the size of my cup. I just measured it with a little tape measure. Select your material and I'm gonna select a smart vinyl permanent because that's what I'm using and we're gonna get ready to cut. Now for the smart materials, I like to use the roll holder just to keep everything in place, but this is optional, you don't need it. But if you do have a roll holder and need help using it, you're just gonna take your roll of smart vinyl, put it in the opening here, slide it through the lip, and then make sure you get it under these two little slide through holders on either side, and that's gonna keep it all centered for you. It's going to make sure you have enough materials, and then it's gonna blink to tell you it's gonna start cutting. Once it's done, you can slide your little slide cut across and then you have a perfectly cut piece of your smart materials. Now I'm gonna trim this down and get ready to weave. And what I love about the smart materials is that you get a really clean cut here. It is very easy to weed and I really love that about the smart materials. Once I removed all of the pieces of vinyl that I don't want, which is also called weeding, you'll hear me talk about that throughout the video, then I'm gonna trim down some transfer tape and I'm going to apply it to my decal. I'm taking a Cricut scraper to scrape it down just to make sure that your vinyl is gonna stick to the transfer tape and not your backer sheet. And then we're gonna apply it right to the center of our cup. Now, if you buy a different cup, just go ahead and measure it to see what size your decal needs to be. But the process is going to be the same and you could easily do this with a Cricut Joy as well. Then once it's all pushed down, we're gonna peel it back at an angle to remove the transfer tape and you're left with this beautiful decal. Now here I accidentally left the eye on the backer sheet, so I ended up peeling it off and applying it by hand. I wanted to share this because you need not worry if you miss a letter like that, you can easily apply it by hand. But I absolutely love these cups. They keep my drinks super cold and it's great to have on the table as I have some long crafting sessions. Also while I was in Target, I grabbed some of these really fun, small universal thread wallets. I thought these would be great to customize with heat transfer vinyl. And the process is gonna be very similar, except for we're going to need some heat to make it stick. So we're gonna start by measuring both of our wallets where we're gonna put the decal. So on this darker one, I measured across the back and on the more cognac colored one, I measured the side. Once I had my measurements, I went into design space and I added some text. I did WC for my initials, as well as just a W for Whitney. And then I got to have fun looking through all of the fonts to select ones that I wanted. Once I click make it, I'm actually gonna select multiple ways. I'm using one smart color and then another one that's just regular heat transfer vinyl. So for that one, I'm just going to go to this drop down and select that I'm gonna cut it on the mat. And then you also wanna make sure that this little toggle down here mirror is selected because we're going to cut it backwards. Now for heat transfer vinyl, there's two sides. There's a super shiny side and a dull side. My super shiny side is my gold side. So I'm gonna apply that face down on my mat and then 
put it in and cut. Then I'm peeling it off and just trimming off the WC off of that sheet. And then for the white W, I'm gonna use Smart Iron On. So I'm gonna grab that roll holder again, and then same thing, shiny side, you wanna feed it in downward, and it cuts super nicely. I really like the Smart Iron On. That is my favorite out of all the Smart Materials. I went through and weeded it the same way I did that decal. It was a lot easier because there weren't any like nooks and crannies with vinyl in it. But once I got all the pieces out I didn't want, then I could do essentially a dry fit because the back is a little sticky. So I like to stick it on, see if I like where it is, and then it's time to transfer with heat. I'm gonna use my Cricut Mini Press on the lowest setting, but you could also use an iron. I would start with the lower setting and then work your way up just because we don't wanna scorch this wallet. So I'm using the lower heat and I'm gonna keep moving my heat press over the top just to heat it up enough that it's gonna transfer. And I did this for probably about 30 seconds with a Teflon sheet on top. That's just protecting everything from getting too much heat on it. And then I'm gonna slowly peel off the carrier sheet to make sure that nothing's peeling up. And here as I'm doing it, none of the vinyl's peeling up, so I knew I was in a good spot to keep on peeling. Then to set it, I just put that Teflon sheet right back on top of it and hit it again with that low heat setting for probably about 10 seconds. Did the same thing for the W and these were all ready to go. I love these. These would make an amazing gift. You could whip these up so quickly. They're good quality, they're super cute, and they're even better when they're personalized. Target has really upped their game with their craft supplies. I really like checking out the Mondo Llama unfinished wood pieces. And today for this project, we are grabbing one of these crates, 10 bucks, good size, and we're gonna make it vintage. Also, if you don't see these at your Target, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, they all have a ton of selection of unfinished wood boxes. Now my goal here is to create a vintage looking crate and I started with a gray wash but it was not the look I was going for so instead I went over the top with a gunstock stain and this made it look more like a rustic crate that I wanted. Then it was time to create my stencils so I could add some wording to it. I decided to do FC Bottling Co. Now this is not a real thing, I made it up, but I used some elements of my real life to make it personalized to me, but also a little fictitious. So I'm typing out FC Bottling Co. Utica, Illinois is where Alex and I had our wedding reception and that is located in LaSalle County, Illinois. So I started by going through and sizing everything. You can also play with the letter spacing and line spacing at the top. I wanted it to stretch evenly across, but because each line has its own amount of letters, I messed with the line spacing so that it would space out evenly. Once I got it where I wanted, I started messing with some fonts, and then I also added property of at the top. Now you could add a curve to it, you could do a variety of different things. That's what I love about Design Space. You can kind of just play around with it until you get what you want. Then my last step was to make sure it fit within the size of my box. So I made a square 11.75 by 5 inches and that is the size of the side of my box that I wanted to stencil. I went up to a line and sent it to the back. Before you do this, you're going to want to make sure all of your text is welded. It's going to act like a cookie cutter. It's going to give you a stencil that's exactly the size of the side of your box, and that's going to help with placement later on. And I'm going to select the Smart Stencil Vinyl because this was the first time I got to try out Cricut's new stencil vinyl without a mat. I really enjoyed it. It cut really well. And when I went to weed it, it had that box on the outside because we did the slice, and that's how I was able to align it when I go to apply it. Now we're going to weed this backwards than how we have done in prior projects. So instead of removing the outside, we're gonna remove the inside of the letters. So essentially anywhere that you want to show up with your stencil, that's what you're gonna take out. Then we're applying some Cricut transfer tape, just like we did before, and peeling off the back. Now, if you get to a point where you're having an issue with the Smart Material backing releasing, I just like to take my heat gun, this is an embellishment gun, but you can also use a hair dryer, hit it with some hot air for about 10 to 15 seconds. It's going to release it from that backer sheet and help you peel it back. I know a lot of you have had issues with that, so that is an easy way. You can still get the great weeding from the Smart Materials and also have it easy to apply. 
Then using that box, I'm lining it up and I'm applying it with my scraper tool and then carefully pulling it back. We're gonna do a quick coat of Mod Podge to seal down that stencil and then when it's dry, we're going to go back through with some black paint. So this is just regular old black acrylic paint. I'm gonna put it onto a paper plate and then take a foam brush and get that covered in paint. I wanna get off any excess so I'm not putting gobs and gobs of paint, but then I'm gonna stipple up and down with that brush over all of my letters. If you get too close to your edge and you're afraid you're gonna go over, you can go ahead and put some painter's tape there. But then once you're done, I don't let it dry, I just peel it right away, then that way you don't have any time for the paint to seal your stencil down. Then using my little scraper tool, I'm removing all of the innards of like A's and O's and B's to get those pieces out. Then we're gonna distress it to give it that vintage look. I'm just using a regular sanding block here just to get it to look like it's worn and rustic. And then we're gonna seal it with some water-based polycrylic. I like this because it dries clear and matte, but it is going to protect your piece especially because I already started scratching the protective surface of the paint. I just wanted to make sure it was good to go. Now, how easy was that? A lot of people get worried about stencils, but they are really simple. Once you do your first one, then you will want to stencil literally everything. I could see this being amazing for a housewarming gift or a wedding gift, even some wedding decor, especially if you're having your reception at a brewery or a winery tons of different options and this guy was only 10 bucks to make and you can find these anywhere to customize it to your liking. When you're in Hobby Lobby, one of my favorite tips is to not only check their areas where they have things like glassware and frames, etc., but also check the seasonal section. All of these are considered spring items, but they have some really cute ones like this jar that is $10 originally, but I'm going to get 50% off and it's only going to go down from here. I thought these jars would make super great additions to my new craft room, so we're going to customize them with some crafty graphics. First step is to measure, measure, measure. I sound like a broken record, but honestly, Honestly, that saves you so much time and headache later on if you measure everything. So for this container, I wanted to do about six inches just so it wasn't from the top to the bottom. And for this jar, I wanted to make sure everything was approximately three inches wide. I'm reaching for some black smart vinyl and I found all of these really cute crafting images within Design Space. I will link the codes down below so you just have to pop them into the search bar and they will pop up for you. Again, the Smart Vinyl weeded so nicely. It was a little tedious because these are pretty intricate, but they weeded so great and I thought they would look really good on these jars. Then it's as simple as applying your transfer tape and then I decided to hit it with a little bit of heat just to help it with the kind of peeling back process. And then I was ready to peel back the backer sheet and apply it right to my jar. I love doing projects like this because I feel like a lot of people think just using a Cricut is to add letters and while it's great for that, you can also add a ton of different images or patterns, things like that to really spice up things or personalize it like I'm doing here to make it a craft item. This smaller jar I can see it being a really great piece to store wood beads like I'm showing here. The other one I think I might use for paintbrushes. I'm not totally sure yet, but the one on the left, I just did the same process, but I cut them six inches tall. I did scissors and this little like paint utensil cup. These turned out so cute and you would not think they were only a 10 minute project. Now, what if you wanna make a lot of jars and be able to get to them easily? Well, this next project, this Lazy Susan is for you. So I found this at Dollar General and I had a blast walking around, checking out their craft supplies. You guys, I've been sleeping on Dollar General. They have so many amazing blanks. I fell in love with this cutting board. I brought that home with me and I ended up finding this awesome Lazy Susan in their seasonal section for $7. Now it is a great size, it's 14 inches across, and for seven bucks, I thought I could definitely customize this to match those items for my craft room. So I started by giving it two coats of white chalk paint just to neutralize the top. Then I hopped over to Design Space to find a print or pattern that I could apply to it because I wanted to do something without wording this time. I started searching the word print and that gave me a lot of animal prints, but in my mind I was looking for more of a boho pattern. So I ended up shifting, searching for that, and I found this awesome image. Now you might be thinking, Whitney, that is a round Lazy Susan and you are trying to put a rectangle thing on it. Well, let me show you how to fix that. 
get yourself a shape. So you're going to add a circle from the left, stretch it out so it covers that piece. And then you're going to select both of them and use the slice trick that we used for the stencil over on that vintage crate. What it's going to do is it's going to give you multiple pieces over here on the side and all you're interested in is the one that is the stencil. If you're not sure which one, go ahead and pull them apart and figure out which one you want to keep and that happened to be this one. Then after that, you can size it to whatever size you want and unfortunately, I cannot cut a 14 inch circle but I thought it would be nice to have a border around the outside. I ended up doing 11 inches across for my circle. Then I cut it the same way I cut that stencil for that box earlier. And a trick here is if you're doing something this large as you're weeding and you've got extra pieces, go ahead and cut that excess off as you go. That just helps you so you don't have to work with one large piece. Then I'm applying my transfer tape, peeling it back, adding any heat if I need it, and then we're gonna apply it to the center of our dried Lazy Susan. Once that transfer tape is all peeled back, then we're going to go through with some black paint and do that same stippling that we did earlier on the box. I do a very similar stencil technique and if you're worried about it bleeding, you can go ahead and add some Mod Podge or the same white paint that you used on the base to seal it. But I wanted to try it without anything, just the stencil vinyl to see how it would work because this was the first go with me using this smart stencil vinyl. And spoiler alert, it worked pretty well. So once I got everything covered, including the sides, I let it dry about 75% of the way there. And then I used my weeding tool to peel back all the little pieces of stencil vinyl. Now, as you can see here, it worked pretty well. This is with no sealant. Now, obviously you can use it as an extra step to be extra safe and careful. After it dried, I just distressed it with a sanding block. This is optional. I just like the scratched surface look. And if you do that, make sure to wipe it up with a paper towel before you seal it because you're going to have all those little black pieces that you just sanded off. Then I gave it a real quick coat of polycrylic triple thick sealer. And this thing is ready to go. It's not going to get chipped or scratched. And it's going to be so awesome for organization in my new craft room. You could put your last name on here. You could monogram it. This would be a really affordable gift for someone if they're getting married, housewarming, tons of different options. This would also be great to give a teacher if you could put an apple and their name on it. Another Dollar General find that I absolutely loved came in their home section. And again, this is another section that I need to check out more often because they have such great finds there. But I ended up looking in their blankets and I was on a hunt for a light colored polyester blanket. I found this white one. It's 100% polyester and I thought this will work with Cricut Infusible Ink. So I got it home and I bopped over to Design Space to find a design that had to do with getting cozy, staying cozy, watching a movie. I just searched cozy at first and I found this Let's Get Cozy and I thought this would be perfect. I ended up sizing it to 10 inches wide. I left the aspect lock on so it just adjusted across and then it's that simple to then cut out. Now because I'm using infusible ink, I'm selecting cutting on a mat. I'm making sure that my mirror is turned on. And I also scooched it over just a little bit so it was centered on the sheet. Now I'm gonna use this infusible ink sheet that I had left over from a friend's bachelorette party. It is leopard print, but you could use any color that they have. You wanna make sure that you put the plastic side down. I used a brayer just to make sure everything is pressed down and I don't get it all over my hands. That's a Cricut tool that I will link down below. And if you're new to Cricut's infusible ink, it is very similar to sublimation printing. They just already did the sublimation printing for you. So now you can cut it into whatever size you want. We're going to flip it over, peel our mat away from the back, and then we're going to start weeding. So I'm peeling off the excess and kind of rolling it like a worm. And then I'm going to get to the side and just start peeling it off. It is kind of a cross between weeding paper and heat transfer vinyl because that backing is sticky, but it is like a paper sh carrier sheet that the infusible ink is on. Once it was weeded, it was time to grab my blanket and apply it. So I ended up doing it on the corner at an angle, but you can put it wherever you want on your blanket. I have a heat press pad down on my table, and then I'm taking my hand and making sure there's no wrinkles in the blanket. Then I'm putting my infusible ink down, so the leopard side is going to go face down, and then I'm using just some heat resistant tape to make sure that it stays in place. 
Now the infusible ink comes with butcher paper. I like to use a Teflon sheet, but you could use either. You just want to protect your press and you need something that will go up to at least 385 degrees. I'm using my Cricut Easy Press. When you're done, let it cool and then you're able to peel that entire carrier sheet off and reveal your awesome saying. Now remember, this is only for things that are 100% polyester, so you wanna make sure you check the tag. It's not gonna work on any old blanket because it's a special reaction between the polyester. You could get some red infusible ink and put, you know, this is my Christmas movie watching blanket or get some colors that match your kid's school and this will be great for football season for a customized blanket. 10 bucks, super quick and easy and oh so fuzzy and cute. I have been seeing so many wood round door hangers lately and so I wanted to make some of my own. I got a three pack of 14 inch wide ones at Hobby Lobby. They were $12.99 but I got them 40% off. I started by staining all three of them with dark walnut stain by Minwax and then I started to add some paint. So for this first one I put painters tape right across the center and I painted the bottom half with some white chalk paint and let it dry. Then I decided to add some text to my sign. So I typed out Cubs in the font Lemon Milk. And this script one is called Serenity. Now the goal here is to make the script font fit and look like it's intertwined with the block font. That is one of my favorite things to do. So you want one that looks like handwriting and one that looks like just like a print. So I like that the H goes over the U and the G goes down by the B. I selected both of them and made sure the entire thing was 11 inches wide and then I cut it out on some scrap vinyl that I had from some prior projects. Weeded them out just like decals, both the blue and the red, and applied them with the Cricut transfer tape. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, Whitney, where is your paper transfer tape that you use all the time? And I actually had some leftover transfer tape that I had used a couple times before. And so that is another alternative if you've got a low tack or one that you've used multiple times. That is my favorite to use on wood. I will also link my favorite paper transfer tape down below so you can check that out as well. And then to make sure it was okay outside and on your door with sun on it, I used some polycrylic just to seal it right over the vinyl, right over the top, and that is going to have it stick down permanently. I just grabbed this red and blue ribbon that I had from Michaels. I actually purchased this to make a wreath for Alex's grandpa in the Cubs theme, so the colors go really well. I just made these little loops, too large, too small, pinched the center and kind of put them together like a bow would look. And then to fasten them together, I just wrapped some jute twine around the center and tied it off. After gluing my bow onto the front, it was time to create a hanger for the back so I could put it on a hook over my door. So I took some thicker jute twine. This is from the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree. I doubled it up, tied the ends, and then added two little chunks of hot glue on the back, put my jute twine into it, and then put some glue over the top, essentially entombing that jute twine so that it will stay as a hanger. I also added two pieces of felt over the glue just to protect the door so there would be no scratching. And here is how it turned out. I love this sign. I am a Cubs fan. My husband is a White Sox fan, but I plan to hang this up at our house. It's a great summertime sign and you could do this for any sports team under the sun. Another trend in these signs I've been seeing is leopard print. So I wanted to show you how to do that. I found this Hi There file by searching Hi There in the images on Cricut Design Space, but I didn't want the rose or the laurel at the bottom. So I clicked contour in the bottom right and I'm just selecting to remove the stuff I don't want. So then I just have Hi There. I changed it to be 11 inches wide and also to white so I knew what mat it should be on when I cut it. Then to get my leopard print, I went into Design Space and searched leopard print. And I want to share this because this is new. Cricut has community designers so folks can make profiles and share their designs with you. So if you're part of Cricut Access, you can go to a profile, see somebody's designs, and that is how I was able to get this leopard print. I just doubled up two of them. I selected both of them and clicked weld down in the right-hand corner so it's one piece. And then I sliced it over a half circle shape that is 14 inches wide to match the width of my sign. So once I sliced it, I had four pieces, so I got rid of everything but the leopard half circle that I wanted. And then I just kind of mocked up my look for vinyl placement, the high there over the edge of the leopard print. Now because it's 14 inches wide, I did the smart vinyl here, but you could cut this on a 12 by 24 mat to get the larger size for the half circle. 
Once it was weeded, I took some transfer tape, lined it up, and applied it to the bottom of my sign. I used a little bit of heat to help all of the pieces release, and it was really easy to line up because the curve matched up with the edge of the wood. Once that was stuck down, I repeated the same steps with the high there. Again, this is 11 inches wide, and I just overlapped it in the center over the leopard print. I ended up sealing this one too with the same polycrylic just to make sure nothing popped off and it will protect it from the elements, especially here in Illinois where it gets crazy hot and crazy cold. And then I created just a little greenery piece for the top by tying some sprigs from a Hobby Lobby piece together. And then I added this ribbon that I got from Old Time Pottery. You can use whatever ribbon that you want glued it down and then added a hanger and this one was done. I think this one is going to be in my craft room or on the craft room door because it just is my leopard vibe. I think it's so cute and I love it. So what if you don't wanna to commit to one season for the sign? No problem, here's what you do. I'm going to start by creating a gray piece in the center with just some chalk paint and then I cut out the word welcome. This you could either type out or you can find welcome images in design space. I'm using the stencil vinyl and I cut this to about 13 and a half inches wide so it would stretch across the 14 inch circle. And I'm going over the top with that stippling motion with the same gray that I painted onto the sign. Then that way it is sealing down my stencil and then I went through with some white paint for two coats to put welcome on to the piece. Once that was about halfway dry, I peeled off my stencil as well as any inner pieces and then I fixed any little issues that I may have had from applying the paint. Then I'm taking that same polyurethane, triple thick, make sure it's water-based and sealing it down. And then I'm gonna make this interchangeable. So I just grabbed some Dollar Tree Velcro and I'm taking one type of the Velcro, using some hot glue and gluing it to my sign. And then I made a ton of different kinds of bows that were all the same size, but all lightweight with different florals and ribbons so that I could apply it to the sign. So I'm gluing the other part of the Velcro to my bow slash greenery mixtures, and it's super easy. So here's your regular sign. You've got the one piece of Velcro here, and then you can Velcro on and fluff and adjust any of your bows that you have. You can make them as you go and adjust your sign. So you could do any type of season, and then you don't have to worry about storing the big sign. You can just store your bows. There are different sizes, different shapes. You can do a variety of different things and I love how versatile this is. So grab some Velcro and make an interchangeable sign. You will love it. In my last Cricut video, I did a pet project and you guys loved it. So for this pet project, we are grabbing some of these 16 by 20 canvases. You get a pack of five for $13 at Hobby Lobby, but you can get these anywhere in any size. And I'm gonna start by popping off the canvas from the frame. Make sure not to rip it so you can use a box cutter, a flat edge screwdriver, whatever works. Get your canvas off, put it to the side and give your frame a good sanding. Then we're gonna take some dark walnut stain and stain the outside of our frame and put that to the side to dry. So I'm gonna start in design space and I'm gonna create a square. To do that, I unlock the aspect ratio up and then I'm gonna type in my measurements, which for this one is 13 by 17. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure you measure the inside of your frame, whatever size you're using. I'm gonna relock the aspect and then I'm gonna go find a image that looks like Sebastian. So I searched Labrador. Once I went through everything, I found this really cute one and I added it to my canvas. Now I switched the color of my rectangle to white just so it wouldn't distract me. And I used that to help me size my image of Sebastian. I got it where I wanted it and then I added some text so I could add his name to it. I typed it out and then picked a font that I liked and got ready to cut. Once his name was where I wanted it, then I just selected both his name and the lab cutout and clicked attach so it would all cut as one piece. Now when I was looking for that picture of Sebastian, I saw this really adorable Christmas dog, so I wanted to do that too. I cut all of them out in the variety of colors. The main Sebastian one was just all black, but then I also did the Christmas one, which called for green, white, and red vinyl as well. I'm doing the heat transfer vinyl or iron on, so you're going to do shiny side down and cut it mirrored, and then go ahead and give it a good weeding to get out all the pieces that you don't want. I repeated that same process for my Christmas dog with all the different colors, and then it was time to press it. So I did 325 degrees for 25 seconds. And the Everyday Sebastian one is super easy because I just have to press this down. 
So I'm taking my cutout, making sure it's centered, and I'm putting my frame down to make sure that everything is where I want it. Then I'm gonna press the top and bottom with my Teflon sheet, do as many presses as it takes to get everything pressed down. And then when it cools, just peel off that plastic carrier sheet and you're done. Then for my Christmas dog, I pressed the black outline down for the 25 seconds and then I did about 10 to 15 seconds for all of the colors. Same thing, put your Teflon sheet down, line up your colors where they need to go and then peel it off once it cools. So I did the red bulbs, green bulbs and white bulbs as well as the red hat and I'm pressing those for max 15 seconds because you don't want to fry the vinyl that is underneath it that's already applied. This layering was super easy because of the outline and then it was time to hook on my frame. So I just added some glue to one corner and applied it with everything facing up like this so I knew it was centered and then I flipped it over and added glue so that everything was pulled taut and hooked to the frame. Now I usually like to staple these in so you can pull them taut but my staple gun is currently in storage so I just used hot glue and then I trimmed off any excess and that guy was done. Now let's say you wanna hang this on the wall. I would suggest these sawtooth hangers. I got this big pack from Home Depot. It's relatively inexpensive and it comes with nails. So I just like to measure the top width on the back and this happened to be 16 inches. So I went eight inches across. I ended up shaking the whole table, but you hammer it in on either side and you are ready to hang your item. I use those sawtooth hangers on a lot of my signs and it works out super well. So I will link that down below at Home Depot. I would recommend those. That's gonna do it for this round of Cricut projects. As always, let me know down in the comments your favorite project. And also be sure to head down to the description if you wanna recreate anything, cause I have got all the links and supply lists and all the things you'll need will all be down there. A huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video and supporting Whiskey and Wit. And be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Cricut project. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.